um, and we're going to start by asking uh, Commissioner Pickens if he will give her invocation, followed by the pledge led by Commissioner Wilkinson. Please rise. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this glorious day and all the blessings in it, Father God. We just thank you for the opportunity to be able to gather here, Father God, as commissioners and staff and citizens, Father God. And let's discuss and deliberate the issues at hand, Father God, and make the best decision for the citizens of Putnam County. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Commissioner Pickens and Commissioner Wilkinson. Um, we're going to open the floor for public comment on agenda items. Uh, this portion of the agenda is designed, you know, I'm not even going to read that because usually in workshop we just let the people talk during the case that, we, that we're discussing. So instead of doing a public comment for agenda items, if, you'll, if you'd like, we'll just let you discuss whatever portion you want to. It would be best if you turned in a blue card if you want to speak and said what agenda item you want to speak about and then I'll make sure and call on you during that agenda item. Um, with that, I'm going to recess the uh, workshop and open the Port Authority workshop. And uh, first on the list is any public comment on Port Authority items. Okay, seeing none, I'll close the public comment on Port Authority and uh, open general discussion by the Commissioner on Port Authority items. Is there any general discussion today on Port? Okay, uh, we'll close that uh, and we'll adjourn the Port Authority meeting. That was a big long one, um, and we'll uh, reconvene the Board of County Commissioners workshop, and we'll go to the item A, the administrative fee schedule. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, this is just an amendment of one line in the fee schedule. You approve it every year as part of the budget process, but Medicare, Medicaid has come out with an amendment to the mileage allowance for what can be claimed under the Medicaid rates. Um, so as you will see, the only thing that we're asking to amend at the January meeting would be the mileage rate to take it in line with what they're uh, reimbursing. We have a motion. So moved. I'll second. I have a motion and a second. Uh, any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Ayes have it unanimously. Okay, and we'll go to option B, which is the floor home park to MSBU. Didn't we already have uh, MSBU? Or is this MOU. Right? Yes, sir. We did talk about it at workshop um, for another entity. So same same premises happening. Um, this group would like an MOU with the county that just uh, enters into a partnership that they help care for the premises. Um, the Parks and Rec support this. Yes, they did. Yeah, it came before the Parks and Rec Advisory Board, and um, Mary Lynn has been on that board for a number of years. She's not now, and uh, her group has worked tirelessly over there. So yeah, we, we unanimously recommend. Mr. Chairman, I move I move approval. I have a motion to approve. Second. And a motion to second. And a second. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. Motion carries unanimously. Uh, Parks and Rec, Melrose Youth Sports Funding Request. I'm assuming this is the one we've been talking about two or three months now that went to Parks and Rec and were, was it approved from Parks and Rec and and is recommended by the staff and for the two fields that we own. And That's correct, sir. Um, yeah. Staff is recommending um, support of the project. The Parks and Recreation Board has uh, recommended support of the project. This would allow them to have the two fields that are currently not lit and they're not able to utilize past dusk, obviously, for safety reasons. And they do have a great program going out there and staff is recommending support of the project. Well, I do support this, but I want to state one thing for what happens. This is another classic example of where the citizens pitched in their time, money, and effort to mm -hmm. make their facility better, just like the Francis facility, just like the, the uh, Triangle Park does some. And I'm telling you right now, this I'm on board with anybody that's willing to put skin in the game with us, and they have. There's a whole list in the packet of things that they have done over the years uh, out at Melrose. So I am going to support this wholeheartedly, and the chair will entertain a motion. Mr. Chairman, I move approval. I'll second. We have a motion and a second for approval. Is there any additional uh, I have a 
question. Yes, sir. Um, unless I missed it, what is the source of funds for this? It'll be general fund reserves. <coughs> general fund reserves. Okay. Yes, sir. No, I agree with you, Commissioner Turner, about um, the partnership that we have, and I greatly appreciate what they've done. Commissioner Pickens, did you have something to add? Yes, I just want to add that um, Julianne and uh, Administrator Suggs Kevin, we went, <clears throat> we took a trip out there and met with um, at the CW, that's right, okay, and, and some of his the members there, and they have worked uh, for a long time to keep those fields up. Uh, they are definitely limited in the hours that they can practice, especially now, um, you know, baseball is almost year-round, so they have fall ball, and they have a number of teams, and just to put their success aside, just their efforts um, to keep those kids wanting to come back to Melrose and, and the quality of, um, of ball that they're playing. And um, I think it's just a, would be a, a, it'd be a shame if we didn't support this. They do have one lighted field now um, and then two that are not. So this would take care of the two. And um, so that would, um, it's going to really help them um, move this pro program further along, uh, especially with their practices and being able to attract maybe uh, tournaments and, uh, and things like that. So I appreciate the support and the, the um, Parks and Rec Advisory um, Board heard them twice. Um, the first ask was a little different. They came back and got some different numbers and came back to us again and we discussed it and 100% uh, agree uh, to move this forward. So that's all I got. All right, thank you. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. Motion carries unanimously. Um, next, we're going to go to item D, which is the general services. And it's my best guess that what happened here is they went in and they started to remodel on all the air conditioning around here that we voted on a couple of months ago, and they left out a part that they thought would be compatible with the new control systems, and it wasn't compatible. And so in order for the heat strips to work in the two units, they're going to need additional funds to replace that particular part that they thought was going to was going to be compatible and it wasn't and so that's what the money's for i don't see where we have a choice unless we want to turn the whole thing off and we've already got it moving right in the middle of the project yeah. and i sort of like you know, heat and cold <laughs> where it can get nice and cool in here <laughs> pardon me <laughs> it's true <laughs> we can put on plenty of jackets if it gets real cold but the problem is we're over there too, <laughs> right? Not just in here. So anyhow, chair will entertain a motion. Mr. Chairman, I move approval. No second. I have a motion and a second for approval. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. Motion. I thought we did. Is that your motion? That was it. To go ahead and move forward. Uh, yeah, we knew time was of the essence. Uh, so, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. Motion carries unanimously. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, we're going to go down to commission requests, and I'm going to start. I've had a uh, gentleman reach out to me concerning canal dredging, and I told him that I absolutely was not on board with the use county funds because I don't even think the canal belongs to the county in the first place. I don't think the county owns any of the canals in Putnam County that I'm aware of, uh, especially this one. So he's going to attend the legislative session with uh, Representative Payne and Senator Hudson in January, and he asked me uh, would I give him a letter uh, that, would, uh, that would support his his ask, and I told him that I would bring it to the board and discuss it. But I'm telling you right now, number one, I don't think there's any way that we can do it on a county level because we don't own it. And we can't, everyone here is aware that we can't work on private property. So if he was successful with from the state to federal on getting the funds, I don't see how we could do it because they wouldn't give the funds to him, they'd give it to us. 
and then it would be another pro another project for us to take on. <coughs> and not only that, there must be at least 50 canals in, in Putnam County that the county doesn't own. The next thing you know, we'd be looking for legislative funding to all 50 canals. Yeah, exactly. um, and like I said, it's not that I don't wish him Wish him, I, I tried to go the MSBU route and said, well, let's do an MS, try an MSBU. And if all the people on the canal will put in the money, then maybe we could do it like a road MSBU. But uh, I was advised by council, he knows no way to get there on a canal dredging MSBU. So, you know, I don't know that there's anything we can do here. And, and the, uh, But I told him I'd bring it to the board and talk to the board. I just don't know there's an answer, you know, there's certainly not a simple answer to this, but do we want to open this box? If I may, um, my experience of that working in Representative Payne's office is uh, we certainly had phone calls about this before. And this guy here and I, in multiple times. Yeah. yeah, I don't know if it's this gentleman or what. And so my experience is that they're all different. And some of them were part of the plat when the, when the, when the division, subdivision was platted. And it, you just have to do uh, title work on it. You have to go back and see who actually owns it. And the few times that we did reach out to the state, um, they said you, they, we'd have to show them title work as to who owned the canal. So that's a big thing, who actually owns it, just like what you said. And I don't know that the county should get involved in it, because if, if it was owned by the state and the state had some kind of rights to it, then they would handle it directly. It wouldn't come through the it wouldn't come through the as far as funds, they wouldn't issue funds to us and ask us to, to dredge it on their behalf. So I think that he needs to sit down with uh, the state representative and the uh, senator's office first. And he can certainly do that before the delegation meeting if he, if he wants. But they need to do some research as to who actually owns it. And if it's the person who built the subdivision, it could be partially owned by all of the owners in the subdivision. Quite a few of them actually meet the down description of the lot go right down the center of the coast center of the canal to the owners on both sides right there to it. And there's a few of them that are owned by uh, the skip lands, right. skip lands, but uh, for those, the county has no right to do them. In the, uh, and I don't know how much work the, can't, that the state actually does on them. I know the Corps of Engineers, the Corps of Engineers are federal, aren't they? You know, so, yeah. so the Corps of Engineers being federal, they, they don't look at them either. They basically at the mouth of every one of them just claim that that's where our jurisdiction ends. Even, even the one that uh, the first one on the left, the uh, second one on the left, going into Dunn's Creek, which goes up to that DOT property that I'm trying to secure for possible boat ramp. That that particular canal is actually owned by the same people that own the bottom of the land in Dunn's Creek. It's titled the same way, so it's not. But it's still not a county-owned canal. It's a uh, a state cut zone canal or whatever it is, whatever is in the name the, the actual Dunn's Creek is, but that's an unusual one from the ones that I've looked at previously. It's usually um, out to the into the canal. The lot owners actually own out into the canal, so we don't own them anyhow. So. Right, but then of course there's the fact that they could access it. Anybody can access it because um, it's you know, accessible by water. So again, I think that gets referred back to the state. And Only way I see a county owning any canal is if they own other sides all the way down on both sides of the canal. Even though, even then, I don't think they do unless it's actually in the county's name. And I right. haven't seen that haven't, yet. It's in the county's name. Like they usually are turned over to, to whatever, whoever owns the water they adjoin, like the river and Dunn Creek and whatever is owned by the state. And that's so, my experience. Uh, that's uh, kind of what I saw when I looked some of them up. Um, so, I. I certainly, I told him straight up that I wasn't for doing any of this because if it was a, not a county owned canal, like I said, we kind of came up with the MSBU thing and I talked to, to uh, Rich about it several months ago and he just didn't know a way for us to get there, but he didn't know if we could set it up for a canal dredging and they're going to run into the same situation that we run into on there's a handful of people in there that want it dredged because it's not one of the worst ones. You know, in the area, and there's a handful of people that say it's just fine if the taxes are going to go up $500 a year. You know, they, they 
and they think it's fine just like it is. So, uh, I, but I did tell him I'd bring it to the board and there was some discussion. Yeah, I think our only avenue is to ask him if it was state representative. Well, he's on the legislative agenda. Okay. Uh, talk to Sean Dell and he talked to, uh, what's your name, uh, Travis Hudson, a uh, legislative aide. And, okay. and he is on the agenda for the upcoming legislative session. He will request the uh, legislative money. But I just, like I said, I just don't see how I can give him a letter of support unless that letter of support was worded in such a way that I wish you the best, but the county cannot take on any obligations whatsoever, you know, to do this project if you're successful in it. Right. Uh, then I don't mind writing them a letter, or, you know, saying, uh, <coughs> Julianne, can you can you uh, come up with me a letter that says something along those lines that, that, uh, that I don't mind giving him a letter of support, but the county the county is not supporting it that I am or something like that, and. Uh, and that the county can't take over the project unless it turns out to be county property, and that, I'm almost certain it's not. Um, so if you can come up with me a letter for that, I'll give that to him in support of his request, but we can't help him as far as we can. And, and just for historical knowledge, we've not ever dug out a complaint email. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, not that I know of either. Okay. So yeah. Uh, that was a drainage district. The drainage district. Yes. Let's yes. Turn back to the county. Yeah, that was. Is that what you were referring to? Elton Grove on that one. No. But that was also part of the mitigation thing, it was, and it was also from Cedar Creek to the river bridge, the new bridge to the river, we, uh, we did use some of the uh, mitigation, used quite a mitigation fund to clean up some of all the deadfall that came in there from the storm. Oh, yeah, so but that was still appropriated by the state, wasn't that's it? That's correct. Right, yeah, that was appropriated by the state. Yes, yeah. that was state mitigation grant, East Platinum uh, Basin mitigation grant. Yeah. But that wasn't really a canal, that was the actual creek itself that, that, was, that itself was causing flooding issues. That's correct. So that's a whole, to me, that's a whole different Right. Oh, it is, and this is not creating any flooding mm -hmm. issues right. that I'm aware of, so we couldn't include it in a mitigation, flooding mitigation plan. Uh, I don't even think any of this area flooded during the last storm that we had. Uh, if it did, it wasn't as serious as uh, other parts of the right. country coming down. Uh, this is the last canal that you get to going east on Carlin, I guess, when that canal down there. Like I said, there's a bunch of canals. So if you do that letter, Julian, I'll give him that. Uh, we'll, uh, if we have anything else on that one, we'll move on. And uh, the uh, next commission request, uh, Commissioner Harvey. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have something that I want to bring up. We've talked about it many times. But this morning, as you well know, we passed, uh, finally got Barton Ranchette Road done. Uh, and the contract is going to be starting out there in the next week or 10 days from my understanding. Um, this board has talked about Oak Tree Lane up in the Francis area and Mr. Troxell went out there along with uh, Robert Freeman and um, so we just want to talk to you about that today. Mr. Nimitz, I've asked him to be prepared. They are and Julianne are fully prepared about this. Uh, we've been going over it for a few weeks but it might be an opportunity now since the contractor is going to go all the way out to Barden this isn't that far to get this road done if we can can make this happen. So if you don't mind, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to turn it over to Mr. Nimitz. Or let, can I ask a question sure. first? Yes, sir. So in layman terms, you're asking us to give you more more pay than you're getting already in, your, not, in, your, last, in your last request? It's not in my district. but you it's sure a, you're not a Democrat? No, sir. <laughs> it's Well, you saved money this morning. You saved $28,000. So... Um, but, but it's something that we talked about trying to piggyback at the same time. Mr. Nimitz, you have the floor. Thank you. Uh, as Commissioner Harvey indicated, there were past uh, discussions by the previous public works director about using leftover funds from uh, Barden uh, Ranchette Road to overlay Oak Tree Lane with asphalt. Oak Tree Lane has uh, millings that are about three years old and is a good candidate for asphalt overlay. 
Uh, we estimate the asphalt overlay cost to be below the threshold required to advertise. Uh, so with that, we would like to get three quotes uh, while we have multiple contractors working throughout the county uh, to uh, overlay this with asphalt. The advantage of that is that if we do this, there is a potential that we may not incur any mobilization costs. So um, there's 28,000 ARPA funds left over from Barton Ranch Ant Road that was awarded this morning, and there are 62,000 left in the resurfacing budget. So with all that being said, Public Works would like uh, authorization from the board uh, to get those three quotes and to utilize the funding reference uh, to overlay uh, the curve. So we have to have three qu quotes for procurement, even though we could just give them the, the original contract or a change order, or we just need to make Excuse me, this is not a valid change order um, opportunity, and um, staff does not recommend using partial ARPA dollars. So um, understand that this is the first time hearing funding sources, but I do not recommend mixing ARPA dollars with our resurfacing dollars if you've got it Can we just find out how much? Do we have any idea what this is going to cost, like a ballpark? Yes, there's somewhere between forty to 60000 right around there. Okay. Well, how about the board, if it's all right with you, Commissioner? The board will authorize you to move forward and try to find it out, and let's just fund it all out of ARPA. I mean, we've already got 28000 in ARPA, so that'd just be 32000 more. Well, we could fund it out of the resurfacing, which we have 60000 60, unencumbered. Yeah, but we, we may also need that somewhere else, though, because there's a bunch of resurfacing we may need to give change orders on that hasn't happened yet, which we're going to talk about okay. in a minute. Okay. So the first part of it was already funded out of ARPA. This commissioner has no problem funding this out of ARPA, as long as it's all out of ARPA. Correct. Okay. Let, can we can we go ahead and give him the authority to get quotes and let's see what it's going to cost? Yes. Okay. Go. So when when Barton Ranch that was originally um, milled or paved or whatever, it never got. Uh, and I'm sorry. I don't it was. All the language, but it, it was a double chip seal road. Okay. Which that we don't do that anymore. Okay, and it never got sealed because I remember never got many sealed. times you asked, "What was the status of that road?" And then what happened, the bridge blew out, so we couldn't get equipment across the bridge Correct. to fix the road. We made a promise to Barden yes. that as soon as the bridge got fixed, we would get out there and get that done. So this is, we passed that this morning. So, my, so in that new proposal, we won't have that issue again? Correct. It, it, it is a completed, sealed, everything sealed. We're not doing double chip seal roads anymore. So what is it called? This is an asphalt. Okay. So do you pay them? Do you? Pull up what's there? Or It'll be milled a little bit, correct, from my understanding. No, the double chip seal, no. No, not. The, what's existing there? Does are you it talking about Oak, Oak Tree Lane? Oak no, Tree Lane? Barden Ranchette. Barden Ranchette will be milled down and then resurfaced. That's the, my question. The chip seal shouldn't be. So, what? how does it, tell me how it works. So, right now there's obviously chip there that never got sealed. Well, there's, essentially you have the stabilization of the road bed. Mm -hmm. and Called a double chip seal. They put down a layer of gravel, they put down some liquid asphalt, and then they put down another layer of gravel and some liquid asphalt. And again, okay. It's called a double chip seal. Okay. And then it, but it's never been paved with asphalt. Right. And so that's what they're talking about doing now is actually paving over the double chip seal, which okay. would give them the opportunity, because the base should be fine, they should give them the opportunity to go right over top of it without milling anything that's there now that particular part of Okay, that was, thank you, thank yeah, you. Chip still has a lifespan of about eight years right around there. Okay, all right, well, thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> so, do you want a motion or just a wave from the board that it's okay for him because we're not telling him he can do anything other than get pricing? Is that okay, everybody just well, wave and then support? Well, hang there on, there is that. one thing to note. We do have a on contract. But, <laughs> well, the problem is it might be, we might be saving mobilization if we can go ahead and move this forward. But Julianne said we couldn't do it like that. We couldn't make this procurement. We couldn't make this, unless they happen to be the low person and it would be an additional contract, then they might could do it at the same time. Is that what you're saying about in, in, in mobilization? We have, we have multiple contractors working in the county right now. We'd like to get quotes from you know, at least three of them. Okay. And whoever's the lowest would like to direct them to proceed while they're still working in the county. They may take their equipment and be out of here at the end of you know, whenever, you know, between now and the next time the board meets. So if this drags out that long, we may miss that opportunity and have to pay remobilization to come back here. Well, I'm not willing to give you just 
carte blanche to go pave the road without any knowing, even even knowing what it, how much it's going to cost or anything. That's an unfair request. Uh, but I'm willing to go forward if it remains in the neighborhood. Um, so how do we fix this, Julian? Do we give him the authority up to a certain amount of money to go on and do it? Like if it stays within the requested amount and then um, allow the administrator another five or 10000 on top of that to, in case it doesn't come in to make it go ahead, if it's going to save us money. If right. it's not going to save us money on mobilizations, right. it can wait till January. Well, we have two two caveats that we need to talk through. One is procurement, and um, anything under sixty-five thousand dollars in total project dollars can be obtained via three quotes. So, if it were under sixty-five thousand dollars, it would be a three-quote scenario with the administrator and the chairman signature at their leisure, at their pleasure. If it's over sixty-five, from a procurement standpoint, we would have to stop until we were able to come back to a consent agenda. That's Caveat one, on the budget side of the house, determining the funding source is going to be pivotal for this conversation. Uh, we would have to validate where we are in the ARPA funds as far as general governmental services and make sure we're not tripping a threshold that we shouldn't be over. Um, and then two, ARPA dollars were booked into a reserves for future projects, which can only be moved by board resolution. I do not have the authority nor the designation to move those dollars. So this angle if we want to try to skin this cat. But um, what do you say we go ahead and approve the, the 65000 out of ARPA if it fits when in your categories of what we can use it for? If not, we'll do the 62000 in paving funds and then, and then let the administrator and the chairman sign it. And then if it turns out that we don't feel comfortable about it when it comes back to us, we'll kill it until January and y'all can talk about it. Everybody. That's fine. The caveat, just it, allowable, but caveat being that the budget resolution would follow the action if it comes out of ARPA, because it is in that future projects, which requires a board budget resolution to be on consent. So your budget resolution may actually trail your purchase order. Okay, but so what does the motion need to say? <clears throat> That sixty-five thousand works. It doesn't mean that every project that's under sixty-five thousand that the chairman is just going to willy-nilly sign it. Other chairman and myself included are very careful with that authority. And if it's not something we feel very comfortable about, we don't sign it. It comes back to the board unless it's an emergency situation <coughs> or, or it's going to cost the county a bunch of money to wait. Or there's got to be some caveats in there. And even then. This chairman would probably bring it back to the board anyhow, even though I did it. Um, just where everybody knew and was comfortable about it. Y'all could slap my hand and I wouldn't ever do it again if you didn't like it. So well, we're just hoping to save some mobilization. I understand. So we can do that. I'm trying to move this forward today. And if we can, then what I the motion I think you is? only need consensus at this time. Your policy allows for the chairman and the administrator to execute a purchase up to 65 and you guys have already discussed your potential funding sources, and until we know for sure which direction we're going, it would come back to consent. So if this happened, that they could get this done within the meantime and before January get it rolling, and it was under under the 65000 the chairman doesn't have the authority to sign for ARPA funds, does he? The chairman, what the chairman signs for is, is not designated in the procurement policy. So that, remember, there's two caveats. The chairman has the authority to sign for the purchase for to execute the contract. As I stated, the chairman nor staff has the authority to move money from a reserves future project. So irregardless of the funding source, when we determine appropriateness, we would have a budget resolution on that January 10th meeting if, in fact, the chairman and the administrator have executed a contract. Basically, we're giving him the authority to go look, and if he can find something that Mr. Suggs and myself deem to be appropriate within the dollars we discussed here today, we can move forward and we'll figure out how to fund it in January, which is not ideal, but possible. So let's clarify just for the public. We're not figuring out how to fund it. We're identifying the proper funding source and, and allocating those dollars to the proper expense line. That's what I meant. I knew you did. <laughs> 
So, okay, so does everybody have a wave of support here for this project? Yeah, I really do. I mean, I like the idea that we could save quite a bit of money by doing this. So well, if it turns that. out we can't, then we'll just turn it off for January and then yeah. we'll move forward under exactly. normal, absolutely normal procurement process. Right. Yeah. I like that idea. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, Mike, don't run off. <laughs> they are, uh, and it may be too early to talk about this, and if it is, just please tell me that it's probably a little early to talk about this. Onyx. Too early? Okay. I won't talk about it, but y'all have a plan. To talk to them or something. Okay, thank you. That's all I needed to know. It's uh, a hard part of our business. Isn't it? Well, I understand I completely, but we ran into it this morning, and yeah. so I know they got a plan. But I mean, I just the people that know me, and especially the people that sit here with me, know that I'm just don't have a lot of uh, <laughs> patience when it comes to this kind of stuff. Because in the real world, we don't have patience for this kind of stuff. When I say the real world, in the private world. But I'll let that go. Uh, we'll start commissioner uh, requests or comments. Commissioner Pickett, do you have anything for us, sir? No, I'm good. Commissioner Wilkinson? Oh, great. I have all kind of requests. Not a problem. <laughs> We've got no 505. Knock yourself out. <laughs> I would like to, so a couple things um, I'd like to discuss. The North Drainage District that we received the funds from the state appropriation, what is the status of that? Or, I know that at one point I asked, and you said we're in the engineering things, but I'm getting asked by constituents in that area. I mean, what is it, what, what are we trying to do here? What's the goal? What, what area are we affecting? That kind of thing. So I know that at the November meeting, we had the official funding agreement and we booked the dollars. Um, at this time, the project would be project led out of Public Works. Uh, Mike, this would be the Bostwick Drainage uh, Legislative Bostwick Appropriation. It's referred to as North Drainage District, but the area in Bostwick. Yeah, would there be a possibility to give her the short version now? Yes. And let me get her, ask her a request if she would take time to go meet with you, her, with you for the full version of the public works. Yes. I, I met with you 15 times over the East Blackman. That's what it takes. So okay. Uh, that's your district. If you could right. just give her the quick update and then let her start meeting with you about that North Drainage District. Sure, absolutely. Uh, right now, um, if I recall correctly, we're getting the funding agreement between us and DEP, which is a grant administrator, finalized. And as soon as okay. that's finalized, then we'll move forward with procurement of the design team and, and then forward with construction after that's completed. Well, yeah, I'll, I'll set up a time to sit down with you because I'd like to see what the particulars are. I know you, you're in design. I understand that. But, like, what the goal is, what area it is that's flooding and that kind of stuff, particularly in the roads and in the area. Yes, it's, it's extensive, so yes, I'll prefer if you do we'll set up some time and we'll sit down in our conference room and walk you through everything. Okay. For several years now, this commission has taken a little different approach to what previous commissions have. That we've actually asked or voted on commissioners to take a project and be involved more in the project and, I like that. and what have you. Um, I would like to recommend that we do that. That way she can be involved, she can be involved with what gets fixed, and she knows the area very well. So, I mean, so I just, I think this would be a very good time to actually get her involved in the project like I am at the landfill and like I am at the utilities and the, um, I think this would be a good time. Do I need to do that by motion or consensus? By consensus? Yeah, I think that would be essential. It, it is your district, and, and Commissioner Walls was heavily engaged with that one, so it would be great if you But he's not any longer, so exactly. would you please Step let Ms. Wilkinson take that over? Thank you. All right, so my second um, request is I'd like an updated phone directory. It's a little thing, but what happens, as I can share with you as a new commissioner, I know we have the directory on the phone line, but you have to know the person's name and what department. And then we have the My Putnam Intra District Web, where it's not being updated. So, what happens is when people come in um, or we get phone calls, new staff, whether it's myself as a new commissioner or new staff coming in, if they get a phone call, we want to be able to direct them to the right person. And so, 
So I would really like to see a directory, whether it has to come Can from the Can I have one, too? I've been sorry. asking for it for five years. <laughs> whether it comes oh. from the BOCC, whether it comes from the BOCC or the countywide IT department, however it happens, I'd like to see that happen. So, it, you know, it's important for us whenever people call that we can get them to the right person. No problem. We'll take care of it. I totally agree. Maybe a spreadsheet or something. Mm. We'll take care of it. Okay. I'd like one also. All right. Can I get one? <laughs> no, you can't. <laughs> she ran out. They only had three. Commissioner Wilkinson is the one that led three. this charge. We'll make sure I, she I has there's, hers. I know there's sources out there, but she would have to know to go to those sources. No problem. And so that's, that's Take like, care of it. Yeah. And then my third thing, and this might be early on in my, um, might be a longer discussion and might not be the right time, but when we discussed um, ambulances, and I know we changed the, uh, the billing rate, but what about our old ambulance bills that are on file that we've had for many years? Um, do we have a way to collect and go after those? Is that something I'd like to see us start to? So we start. We, we discussed during the budget process that that's going to be a first of the year workshop item is that we're going to bring you guys some options for. Um, we don't currently do collections of aging accounts, okay. um, but we are going to bring you all some options and get some more direction on how you'd like to move forward in that and in that way. Right. I just think that there's uh, an ability there to recoup some of our expenses. I know we're not going to get them all, but anything we could do to bring revenue in back into the county for people who receive these services. Um, right. A couple of years ago, uh, a big issue was yeah, getting the bills out. I think they've rectified most of that. Yeah, care that. So <coughs> we didn't really know how much we even had owed to yeah. because they had never been billed. But that's been probably a couple of years at least, and so they have fixed that, I think, or mostly fixed that over the time okay. with the new billing software and the, and the people that are working in that department. Yeah, we're billing within seven to ten days. So we do our own billing, that's not a third party. No, ma'am, we do our own in-house billing. Okay. Uh, so we're going to set this up in either January or February, and then um, um, uh, Commissioner Wilson, if you have any questions, about that, would you get with Jr. Yeah. or Julianne? Uh -huh. uh, because any input that you could give, I know you have a strong financial background, also any input that you could give. Okay. Uh, I know about chip seal. You know about this kind of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> well, we used to, Mr. Chairman, we used to do our own billing. Yeah. No, I mean we used to third-party bill it out, but we found that that was that was a mess. That was a mess, and it was, they weren't keeping up with it, so we brought it back in the house, but the collections is, is the problem. It's not the billing. And we talked about even trying to, well, I won't make light of it, but, you know, if somebody does use our service, they, we, we should be getting paid. Right. To a certain extent. So those are my three requests, sir. I'm done now. Oh, yeah. That's all you want. That's no problem. <laughs> we ought to go for the big one. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Especially seeing how one of them you had to take over and start doing it yourself. <laughs> so, all right, so, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm good. I'm good. Commissioner Harvey, would you like to bring this up on the Sure, and I, I got one other thing. Um, you know, the other day, it was yesterday, I believe, the fire EMS was challenged by the Sheriff's Department on ringing the bell. Oh, yeah. um, Just for clarification, sir, that was the other way around. I'm sorry, excuse me. Okay, well, so uh, fire EMS challenged the Sheriff's Department. We don't know who won. But the ringing of the bell for Salvation Army, there is a slot available on Monday the 19th. So I'm going to take a time slot. So if any other commissioner wants to join me that day, Publix on Monday the 19th, or any elected official that would like to come out. You don't have to wear outfits like the Sheriff's Department did yesterday. But uh, Are you? <laughs> I doubt it. I don't think I will. No. I don't know that I'm going to come. Then. Would it help if I did, you would come? Try to be there. If, you, if you're gonna wear, if you're gonna wear an elf outfit or whatever it is you wear, then I would probably try to be there. He's there. I'm being painted into a corner. I bet Sarah would even show up and take your picture. And he'll tell her what time it is. <laughs> okay, moving right along. On two, snow day is going to happen in Putnam County on Tuesday, December 27th, from 3 to 7 p.m. at the Placker Riverfront, and uh, all they're looking for is volunteers to come help at the snow day. 
on Tuesday, December 27th. Right? Good. And that's open for us and anybody out there in the listening audience. Please join. Mm -hmm. Please join. Thank you. You're welcome. That's all my comments. Yeah, I don't think I have anything further to add. Um, Deputy County Administrators, either one of you have anything to add? I just have one um, item to remind the board of that we have set the Putnam County Legislative Delegation hearing. You briefly talked about it. It's January 9th. Um, staff is working to put together the county's legislative uh, priorities. So if you would like to talk to staff or meet one-on-one, -on -one, um, we can go through the list of um, some of those things have just been tabled from prior legislative cycles that didn't get funded that we're going to um, work on again. But you can come see us at any time. Um, Senator Hudson and Representative Cheney have confirmed that they'll be here that day. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Commando, do you have anything? Okay, so... Uh, we got one more. Chairman, um, just, just to keep the commission aware, with the MSBU issues we had out in Boswick at the St. John's Harbor, our graders are going to go out tomorrow and at least get the people some reprieve on their roads. Um, just to keep you guys aware, they're going to be there tomorrow morning. Um, and then they'll get it up to schedule till at least we can get another contractor in there to start giving them the services that, they, that they're requesting. Well, I appreciate that, JR, that you're that responsive, but we need to be careful that we don't take too many county funds and use them for MSBU projects. But I appreciate the fast response in this case. That's what we do. Well, in this case, too, the, um, you know, they have not been serviced since September, and I did meet with them. I didn't discuss that this morning. I did meet with Mr. Thompson, and, um, you know, it's somebody referred to it as a perfect storm of things that have happened, and that's exactly what, you know, looking at, you know, all of those things put together. So I'm, I appreciate the fact that the county is going to do it. It might be a one-time thing, and that's fine, I understand, but I'm, I appreciate the fact that JR is um, willing and, even going to the meeting tonight, so I really appreciate his attitude for that. I totally agree with you 100%, um, and I hope that everybody understands I'm not getting on him in any way, shape, or form. I appreciate the uh, trying to get things going, and that's why I was such a supporter of him being where he's sitting right now, yes, because he does have that go-getter attitude right. to get things done, right. and uh, we need that badly need in that. this county. Yes, sir. And so, uh, the, uh, my only point here is, is that we need to make, you know, like for instance, I know that St. John's Harbor was upset, so was one of mine, but they didn't have any money in October 1st when the new budget year started. That's when the new updated amounts happened. So before then, they were working on, they ran out of money in the middle of the year and the commission went in and mm -hmm. voted to, to old, take over right. their MSBU for the remainder of the year. So not like we haven't been over backwards to help them when I still want to continue to do it. But they didn't have any money to October first, and then they had the issues with their contractor, and they've had other issues too. Hopefully, we're fixing to try to get all that taken care of here in the not too distant future. So. That's the goal. Okay. Thank you. Anything else? Uh, they are okay, and uh, nothing from the county attorney. We're going to open the floor for uh, public comment. Anybody here today that would like to address anything on public comment? Seeing none. Um, if there's nothing else to come before this workshop, uh, other than a reminder that we have a 505 budget meeting this afternoon, or the end of the county commission meeting, uh, the meeting is hereby adjourned.